Hello valued viewers, I hope you're all doing really well. I hope you're really excited for a massive naval match. We're going to be doing a modern or even futuristic Chinese carrier group versus a modern or futuristic American carrier group. We can now do this because we're at the point now, we've been working in the background, we've got a lot of the modern weapons systems and aircraft working that will be used in a battle today. Weapons like the long-range AIM-120D and the long-range Chinese PL-15 and the Super Hornets now working properly, the F-35s are working properly, the Flying Sharks are working properly, we've got the long-range analogs for the Ace radars working just about right. So we can now do these really super modern battles. Now we've done China versus US naval before. As you can see, about a year and a half ago, we did this. US and UK carrier group versus China and Russia carrier group. That was all cool, but it was old tech. It was all 20 plus year old tech with 20 plus year old missiles and 20 plus year old ships and so on. Then about six months ago, we did this. Early 2000s US carrier group versus early 2000s Chinese carrier group, but the same problem, relatively old tech. The main thing we introduced in this one was that we had humans driving the ships. Again, that's what we'll be doing today. You'll see several improvements over the battles that we've done before. For instance, we now have long-range air-to-air missiles working. Because these missiles have such large ranges compared to the medium-range legacy missiles, we've had to spread the battle out massively just to make it possible. So instead of 80 miles between each carry group, you're now going to see 180 miles. It's the minimum distance we can work with now. That means you're going to see huge changes in the dynamics of the battle. No longer will we see ship-on-ship -ship engagements, or very little of it, because obviously for these carry groups to close to each other would take three hours or so. So a completely different shift in the way the battle is going to look and end. That said, we haven't got everything working quite right. It's a continuing process. The next project we want to work on is introducing the AGM-158CL Rasm. We think we can get the code working. What we really need is to get a suitable 3DS model into game. We can buy some from the shelf on the internet, but they are not suitable. Their polygon counts are wrong. If there's anyone out there that could help with this, it would be much appreciated. None of us in GR are 3D modelers. All we need is a working model, and we'll be able to get the AGM-158C working. And that will really change the face of the battle. And while we're talking on future projects, now we've pretty much finished the US-Chinese axis. We're going to start working on the Russian axis. We're going to start getting the R77-1s working properly in-game, which don't work properly, and a few other Russian assets. And then we can start modernizing the Russian Air Force in-game, which I think will be really interesting. Again, if you can help with that, it will be much appreciated. We have very limited time and resources. So on to today, 2025, what our predicted Chinese carrier group will be, the best they have, and the same with the USA. Overview, China, one CV, their brand new and first supercarrier, their third carrier in history, the Type 003 Fujian, or our analogue of it. Four destroyers, Type 052Cs, about 15 year old but still active. Two frigates, Type 054A, active. They do have slightly more modern ships, the 055 and the 052D, but we don't have them in game, and I'm not sure it would make a huge difference anyway. They have 61 AI aircraft. AI is all set to max level as usual today. They have 30. Fourth gen flying sharks. And in fact, this is the first point of contention. Type 003 Fujian carrier, their brand new carrier that left dock a couple of weeks ago. Not in service yet, predicted to be in service in 2023. Uh, here's the thing, no one in the West knows anything about it. We don't even know its tonnage. Everything I've read from the most popular websites after basic Google searches state that we don't know its tonnage, we don't know how many aircraft are going to be on it, and we don't know which aircraft are going to be on it. The best predictions are it's either going to run 40 FC-31s, otherwise known as J-31s, otherwise known as J-35s. These are the modern stealth naval fighters, very roughly based on the F-35 Lightning II from America. And guess what? We don't know anything about that aircraft either. Even if it was put into production in 2025, which I don't think it's going to be by the feel of what I can see on the internet, then we've got no way of modelling it because we don't know anything about it. 
So we're going to run on the assumption that the J35 is not going to be in production by 2025. Hey, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they suddenly start making them in the factories. But personally, I doubt it. Which means that they will use their modernized flying sharks, the J15 Bravo. The largest prediction I've seen is that Fujian will be able to run at 80,000 tons estimated 60 flying shark Bravo models. So that's what we'll be using today. So 30 of those air to air to clear the airspace and then 30 anti-ship. Of course, it's a multi-role platform. One AWACS KJ600. Humans, and we'll talk about them in a bit, and they'll be in flying sharks giving a total of Chinese 7 ships and 61 AI aircraft and some humans. Sorry this has taken so long, there's a lot to go through, obviously. 180 miles to the east, USA, 1 CV Gerald Ford class, 4 destroyers, Arleigh Burke 2A, 25 year old but they're still in service, obviously. 2 cruisers, Ticonderoga, 30 years old but they're still in service, obviously. 28 frontline 5th gen fighters, the F-35C. This is the biggest difference you'll see between what we predict in 2025. A Gerald Ford class carrier group will be running 5th gen fighters. As far as we can see at the moment, China will not be running 5th gen fighters by then. 12 4th gen FA-18F Super Hornets as air-to-air. -air. Then 32 4th gen anti-ship Super Hornets. This is another thing that separates from what we've done before. We are using nowadays the full capabilities of the aircraft carriers in terms of what they can hold. Fujian, we believe, max out at 60 flying sharks. Gerald Ford, we're maxing out at 75 aircraft. So it's going to be a huge fight. And obviously, now we have increased hardware power, we can run these bigger fights. One, AWACS E2D. For the first time, we're trialing refuelers today. You guys say you want to start seeing us using air-to-air -air refuelers. We're trialing them. I doubt it's going to work. I can only really test it in the main battle. So take that with a pinch of salt. Plus our humans in F-35 Bravos. They should be in F-35Cs, but we've run out of time. And it's going to make no difference in the game, trust me. So don't worry about that. Total of seven ships and 75 AI aircraft plus humans. That's our overview. Let's start going into the nitty gritty details where the real nerdy stuff is. So first, the size of the carrier group. Obviously, I've learned a lot about naval warfare since I've started doing these. If you go back to the first ones, I had no idea what I was doing and I'm far from an expert now, but I've got a fairly good handle on it. What dictates the size of the naval vessels? And that is the mission. There is no such thing as a standard Navy carrier strike group. It's all based on the mission. The carrier could go out with one escort. It could go out with six escorts. It could go out with 30 escorts. It all depends on the mission. We've standardized in GR six escorts because, like I said, there's no right answer. We need to create a uniform. So two Tyco cruisers and, of course, four Arleigh Burke two A's. The Gerald Ford actually played by Nimitz today, and we'll talk about why that is in a bit, but it's not going to make a huge difference, and it will equal itself out. So don't worry too much. Ah. First, 28 F-35 Charlie models, as you would expect. AI, and set to stealth mode rather than murder mode. Every time I just have to decide between murder mode and stealth mode, I get lots of angry viewers shouting at me, so I'm just going to have to go with my gut feeling on what's going to be most effective, and I'm putting them in stealth mode. Without the modernized conversion, that gives us four missiles, four AIM-120Ds, all working with a range of around 100 nautical miles. Nothing on the wings and the pylons will be removed for flight and giving us a rate of cross section of 0 0.005 meters squared, about the size of a big bug. 28 of those will take off and do their damage. Next, we've got the air-to-air -air super bugs. They will be in full murder spec with 8 AIM-120Ds. I should say all aircraft today are using modernized long-range radars. Radars that can see another aircraft of the same size at about 90 to 100 miles. So it's another massive change from what we saw with the old legacy fights we did. Where the planes would have mechanical radars back then. They could see other planes about 40 miles. Now we can see and fire at them at about 100 miles as we think it would be probably in real life. And a couple of modernized sidewinders for close in combat. And finally, the anti-ship. This is a bit of a thorn in our side at the moment, valued viewers. And again, I call for your help. I don't expect it, but it would be nice if we did. We're having to use Legacy Hornets as the anti-ship. We can use Super Hornets and we can equip them, but they will not fire their anti-ship weapons. We're using the basic VSN 
FA18F mod for this, and we cannot get them to shoot the missiles or whatever we do. If anyone out there can work out how to get them firing, please let me know and I will get it done for you. For the time being, we're having to use bugs pretending to be super bugs. 32 of them, all armed with four harpoons. That's four times 32 is 128 harpoons. They will take off, scatter to the left and right flanks and fire our harpoons, obviously, and a couple of sidewinders for self-protection. Note the unrealistic setup of the ships. Why is that? It's because they're starting here and they're starting stopped. That's because we will have a human admiral today who will control the ships. He will put them into whatever formation he sees fit. He might move them forward. He might move them backwards, sidewards, wherever he might keep them standing still. There are no restrictions today because I want to make it as realistic as possible. Do not expect to get in ship on ship contact, guys. You're 200 miles away and you will not see each other in the time span we have. So everything is going to be about creating a protective barrier for that carrier. AWAX, obviously, is the E2D Hawkeye. Also, we've got a couple of Vikings for refuelers. They might work, they might not. We're going to try. I doubt they'll work. And finally, starting 50 miles behind a carrier are our humans. Why is that? Well, that's because humans do not share space with AI. It can't happen. They corrupt the AI, they break them, they bully them, and the AI stop working. Uh, that's just how it is. So they're starting 50 miles, which will simulate them, you know, sort of taking off from the carrier. They can have infinite respawns, and that will be matched on both sides, so it cancels each other out. So don't worry too much about that being a factor. F-35 Bravos, pretending to be F-35Cs, will have no difference in the game. In stealth format, with four M120Ds. Note, guys, because you're in murder format, you do not have room for sidewinders. So plan your attacks sparingly. And that today is a modernised 2025 Gerald Ford class carrier. Strike group, and that brings us on to the Chinese. Probably the biggest thing today that separates us from the previous attacks is that now China, 2025, have their first supercarrier. It's the Fujian. We don't have it in-game, obviously. Why? Because no one knows anything about it in the West. No one even knows, really, how big it's going to be. There are guesses about its weight. There are guesses about its payload. There are guesses about its weaponry. No one even knows what weapons it's going to have. It's all guesswork at the moment. And so, obviously, we can't model it. So, we've just put an American supercarrier there, thinking it's going to be roughly equivalent. No, it's not nuclear power like the Nimitz class is, but for what we're doing here, it's going to make no difference. It's got the same rough catapult layout. Note, the catapults on Fujian are electromagnetic. The catapults on Gerald Ford are electromagnetic. We don't have those in-game, but because we're going to be using steam on both sides, it will equal each other out. So don't worry about the fact that we're using steam instead of electromagnetic. The escorts are pretty realistic. Uh, 052C, obviously they're only 15 years old and a couple of uh, modernised frigates which are relatively new, new as well. So that's all fine. The flying sharks, 60 of them. Interestingly, China's only made 50 flying sharks and I've got 60 on today. So I'm going to pretend that they've made an extra 10 in the next three years. So there are 30 Flying Sharks, these are Bravo units with the modernised long-range radar as modelled and the modernised long-range missiles as modelled and working now finally in-game. The air-to-air -air have four PL-10s, the equivalent of modernised Sidewinders, high off ball sight, helmet mounting display, blah, blah, blah. Six, and this is the most important thing, PL-15 long-range missiles, a range of about 100 miles, and we'll see that, see that come into play, and a couple of medium-range uh, PL-12s as well that they probably won't use, but they're there anyway. And then you're going to have 30 anti-ship, which are going to be a realistic loadout, bearing in mind the power of the engines and what they can carry. Four YJ-83Ks, uh, modernized uh, Chinese anti-ship cruise missiles and defense for pl 10s I wouldn't be happy to load a flying shark up with much more weight than that bearing in mind the current power of the engines or what I would expect to see uh they've got an AWACS which I've just learned is a KJ600 and for me looks like an amazing copy of the American E2D Hawkeye I don't know what you guys think but and that's that they've got humans who are going to be in flying sharks obviously uh, and they are going to be in air-to-air -air format today with the air-to-air -air format as we saw there. Infinite respawning and 50 miles back. That is a lot of talking, guys. But it's covered a lot of stuff and a lot of changes of what we are going to be seeing. And on to our humans. Today, we're going to have flying for the Chinese. We just had one guy rage quit, so that's a problem. So we're going to have unequal sides. I can't do much about that. That's humans, I'm afraid. 
Chinese, we've got Simba. He's going to be sort of team captain. He's also going to be a part-time ship admiral, so he can move to ships. We've got Strider, we've got Bird, and we've got Poosh. Say hello, Chinese boys. Hello, hello boys. boys. See, that's my boys. They don't see they're American, but they're happy to fly Chinese. That is good gamesmanship. Um, I'm gonna get rid of that. On the American side, we've got Grump, uh, team captain and part time admiral, Matrix, and Killer. Say hello, my uh, Americans today that aren't actually American. Ahoy! Hello! Part time ship captains, between lives, because you can respawn, and especially at the beginning, guys, move your ships to where you would want them to be. I wouldn't overthink it because there's not much you can do with them at these ranges. My idea put a destroyer and a cruiser screen outside in front of the carriers, which leads us on to finally the last bit of spiel before we fight, which is the predictions, guys. Yeah, I think the Chinese will win this one. Hmm. America. Crump, are you ever going to say anything other than America, or is it always going to be just America? America. All right. America. China, number America. one. We've got a 50-50 split in GR. That's actually quite unusual. Right. Uh, so half the guys think China, half the guys think America. I'm going to go with my prediction. I've tested not all together because I can't do that, but I've tested each individual flight to make sure everything works. Everything does work, and we'll talk about the realism of that as we go. I am very, very sure America's going to win. Everything else being more or less equal. The naval assets are just more or less equal. The AWACS is more or less equal and stuff. But what really separates from the men and the boys, and I hate saying this because I don't really like modernity in any shape or form. Toys. Fifth gen fighters are so bloody good. And we've even got them a little bit nerfed in this game, as we'll talk about in a bit, which means made slightly worse than they are in real life. You know, nothing's ever perfect. Simulations are never perfect. But still, as soon as you put fifth gen in anything, and you've got it modelled pretty good, as you'll see, we've got it modeled pretty good. They just wipe the floor. Uh, so I think USA. However, we've had so many upsets before. And don't blame me if it gets upset. Value viewers, we're doing this as fairly as we can. Stand by for battle. And here we go, guys, for the biggest, most modern battle so far in 3, 2, 1. Let's go and first check out the Americanas. We have our analog for Gerald Ford. 28 F-35Cs taking off and, to be honest, looking quite handsome. We have the escort ships up here. Who are going to be controlled by Grump today? Grump, are you... Yes, you. I can see you're moving the Tycos. Uh, any... Are we allowed to know what you're doing with them? Or is it... Upsec. Well, what that man said. Keeps his card tight to his chest. We've got the AWACS, which can scan out to about 300, 400 miles, depending on target size. We've got the boys. We've got Matrix and Killer, and Grunt will join them soon, charging towards the uh, guys, busy burning their stealth coatings off, as they like to do, which is not modern game anyway. And the Chinese have started firing weapons. Now, this is an interesting development. This is the YJ-62. I guess it's a little bit like the American Harpoon and the ship missile, but... It's at least claimed a 400 mile, uh, kilometer range. That's about 250 miles it can go, hence why they're firing them. So we've got the case where the AWACS can see the ships at nearly 200 miles. And then the YJs can be fired from the destroyers, which we'll go and check out now. They fire them from the cells, just rear of midships here, sidewards. In fact, one real problem is they, if there's a ship beside them, directly beside them, the missile will actually hit that ship, which is why I've had, why I've had to stagger them like this at the, at the start because otherwise they'll blow their own ships up. Obviously in real life they're not that stupid to launch when they're lying abreast, but... Good news is, this time round, it does not look like they've sunk any of their own ships. Now, that's actually a real problem, by the way, uh, in game. One, two, three, four, five, six. No, they're all good, and nothing's damaged. Uh, the flying Sharks going off at quite an advanced rate by the look of it, but should be good. Reminder of the loadout, we've got six PL-15s, two PL-12s, and four... SD-10s. Uh, we've got the humans with the same loadout here. Strider, Bird and Poosh. Soon to be joined by Simba once he's finished moving his ships. Uh, Simba, are you going to enlighten us on what you're doing with your ships or is that OPSEC as well? Oops. I'm doing the flying V formation. Apparently Simba is on a boat. Right, and that's where we are at the moment. Um, F-35 Lightning's in the air from the AI. We should talk about radar cross-section valued viewers. These are set to 0 0.005 meters squared, about the size of a big bug. These are 0 0.005 meters squared. 
and the Super Hornets are set to uh, 1.5 meters squared, as they about should be in real life. And RCSs are all modeled today. The Flying Sharks are set at 5 meters squared, a much bigger radar cross section as it should be in real life. Now, let's talk about radar detection ranges. F 35 can see a, a Flying Shark at about 100 miles and launch at about 90 miles. Inversely, a Flying Shark can only see a lightning at about 20-ish miles and fire at about 18 miles. That's probably a titchy witchy bit more than it could in real life, uh, even with its uh, modernized long-range radar, but it's within the realm of what we'd expect to see against a stealth aircraft, so we'll let it go. Uh, same with the boys. The boys will see them about 100 miles or so. Uh, the super bugs will see the flying sharks at about 100 miles and fire at about 90 miles, and the flying sharks will see the super bugs at about... 100 miles and fire about 90 miles so the 1.5 meter squared of the superbug isn't going to play a massive difference if that kind of makes sense right now i've said that let's work out roughly where the middle is it's good to get a bit of perspective here so the middle is about there so try and visualize that as the middle point um interestingly it looks like the flying sharks are actually coming off the carry at a faster rate which is exactly what i promised it wouldn't happen valued viewers i don't know why the stealths are taking longer to launch i don't know if it's a real thing or just a game thing it just is a thing um, in terms of distance 40 miles 50 miles again they're a little bit slower than the flying sharks i don't know where that is again it's just a thing these guys look slower they are slower they're transonic fox three they probably had a different rate right matrix has fired at 85 nautical miles but 100 statute miles talk us through it matrix i've uh, picked out the lead element of the uh Enemy aircraft on the way, that was a good solid lock. Waited till 85 miles. I'm going to head towards them, slower, give my missile a chance to do mid course updates, and then go pit bull. I'm going to get out of here. Roger. Now, note how fast that missile is valued to. It's actually faster than I've allowed it to go. The reason that is is because it's fired so fast by Matrix. Matrix, because it's a video game at the end of the day, can go faster than the real stealth. The real stealth is limited, obviously, because its stealth co coating burns off. There is no burnt stealth coating to worry about in game, so Matrix can just fly at the max airframe limit, which is like Mark 1.9 or something. So. Hence, he's given this a massive boost, and he doesn't have to worry about RTB because he's got respawns and whatnot. Uh, so he's given us a huge boost, like you would an F-14 would to a to a Phoenix, for instance. And it's going, you know, whatever that is, Mark, probably near on Mark Five now, actually. So Titi, which is a bit unrealistic there, but again, theoretically possible still. Is it going to hit him? Uh, hit the targets? I don't know. They're jamming. Everyone today has jammers. It's up to them whether they want to use it or not. The J, the flying sharks will be using their jammers, and even with modern. Acer radars, it will cause problems. This may not hit. We'll have to go and see. It may hit, it may not. And this thing that all missiles fired today will have a home on jam feature, as they would in real life, where it allows them to home onto the jam. This one appears to have missed. Either the jammer just did its job, or more likely, it was just such a long range shot that the batteries have run out. All batteries are modeled for all sensors and all missiles in DCS. We get to set them, and we set them to three minutes. Three minutes is what we That's expect three. a modern chemical fuse to be able to do in a long range missile. <gasps> Matrix is firing more. One of these is going to get through. Uh, range is way down now. Close range. AI started firing. No idea why they waited so long, but they did. I, well, I can tell you, it's because of jammers. If these guys weren't jamming, these A120Ds will be plugged away from 100 miles or so. I can guarantee you that. In fact, some of them are at 60, well, 60 miles and stuff like that. But they're getting closer. They're getting closer because of the jammers. Oh, here's an interesting thing I didn't expect to see. A Peel 12 out from this guy here. He's got all of his missiles. He fired a medium-range missile for some reason. Um, I don't know how he did that. But he did. And he's going for the front. this front guy here. That's above what he should be able to do in real life. So, I guess... Um, Oh, and a PL-15 out. Who's that for? Oh, that's from Strider. Strider's managed to get a PL-15 out. Now, I wonder how you did that. What did you see on your radar, Strider? You shouldn't be I able to see I got two people flanking hmm. on my radar. Yeah, it's got some I weird results. We've, yeah, we've had a bit of an over-penetration of, of stealth here. Didn't expect to see that today, but the missiles have missed anyway. One went down and one just lost track altogether. Oh, well. I wonder if you got these guys out here. I wonder if he's shot those Vikings. It should work pretty well. Anyway, let's carry on and see what we've got here. This guy's gotten really close. That, I'm afraid, is DCS at its worst. Sometimes they'll just go stupid, and he's just gone stupid here. He's decided to fly a long-range kind of interceptor into close combat. It will happen sometimes, but there's only so much we can do. He's fired one of his missiles at a point blank, pretty much, and obviously he's going to kill the guy. Like I said, these jammers will give weird, weird results sometimes. Sometimes you just will not be able to shoot at a plane. 
Uh, that said, so far, and not a single lightning has gone down, and lots of, or at least some, fl uh, flying sharks have gone down. So that's the thing. Uh, Strider's got something unfriendly coming towards him. No, he's dodged it. Oh, has he? Yes, he has. Good notch, sir. Even modern long-range missiles with big radars can be notched still. They're not unbeatable. Again, uh, probably unrealistic long-range shot there from PL-12. I don't expect it to be effective. It could even have been a mad dog where he fired it without a lock. So far, everything's working about right. Not a single lightning down, even this weird, crazy guy. And flying sharks are going down at a rate of knots now. If we imagine that there was the middle line, the blues have pushed the reds over. This guy, you see, they are firing the missiles. Mad dog, they're not tracking. Apart from that, PL-15 at close range. This may track. No, it's not tracked. And he's gone into a merge. The weird things you see with AI valued viewers. That's a him problem, I'm afraid. Still, look at all these big white M120Ds now coming, smashing these, these sharks down. Now, one thing uh, to think about valued viewers is we, we've got a lovely god mode we're watching here. Everything looks simple. In the game, in 3D, that these guys see, it's not simple. Elevation. Some of these are on the deck. That guy's, well, that guy's up high. Some of them at 40,000 feet. So elevation. There are many miles of elevation to think about. Speed, aspects. Also, the jammers. The jammers will mess everything up. So they can't just pluck these guys out of the sky like you would be able to see on God Mode here. Much more complex. It's pretty well modded generally. Miss. But so far, look where, look how far the, uh, not Raptors, Lightnings have pushed in. 25 miles. Oh, the close range shot there. That may even track. No, it was a mad dog. It was never fired in anger. That's not a mad dog. That's an IR seeking missile. And that's this Raptor's um it was Lightning's own fault. He got with an ACM. That's a lightning problem. No, that one never tracked. Still big long range missiles being fired over the shoulder at 60, 60 odd, 70 miles. And these missiles will track. That one's gone dumb. It lost its track. PL12 fired at 16 miles here. And here's an interesting thing, valued viewers. Guy, if the Lightnings get let one guy get close, like they've done here, he can see this guy now on his radar, clear as day, who can feed information back to him, who can then shoot on him. So that's something to think about. It's very important uh -oh. if you're going to fly stealth planes, don't let anyone get anywhere near closer to you, even if they, they, they can't aggress you themselves. And this guy's now got a PL15, and that is a direct fire PL15. That's going to track. And he's dead. He's a dead stealth. That's all his own fault. Oh, you... That's probably luck, to be honest. Check those tankers. Oh, look at that! They did! Strider shot from 150 miles away, PL 15s that went over the top, and they missed, but they were tracking the tankers. That's what you saw. Isn't that interesting? Oh, we got an E2 Hawkeye down. Oh, oh, really? They've killed the AWACS by fluke. He thought he was shooting at a... Uh, that's going to have a massive impact. And one thing I really didn't think was going to happen today, an AWACS being shot by friggin' accident by a PL-15, 150 miles. That's real modern warfare, I'm afraid, valued viewers. That's going to have a huge impact. Uh, the way people can see what they see is called fog of war. That means the blues will see on this F-10 map, the data link screen, what their AWACS sees, basically. The AWACS is gone, so what our lovely guys here, AI and humans see, is now being nerfed to what their own radar can see, pretty much. Which is a massive problem. So you're going to see a huge reduction in the quality of fighting from the blues now. I say that, it's actually been pretty terrible so far with AI. Humans have done alright, but the AI have fought really badly. Uh, I can tell you, mm -hmm. from the J-15 side, we haven't. I have not gotten a radar lock on a single 35, only the same. EO lock. Right, and the AI, I'm seeing the same problem from the AI. The AI are launching missiles. Look at these missiles they're launching. They're dumb firing them without locks. They're not tracking. Look at that. It's but I can lock on those three actually, planes way in the back. This one is tracking. No, it's, it's just not... It's not tracking. So there's a huge problem. Now, in terms of who's died, what I would love is a counter up here saying this many red have died, this many blue have died. We don't, do, don't get that, unfortunately. Uh, it's something I would love to have added to the game. I'm pretty sure it's not very difficult to do. Uh, I would say probably three or four times as many blues flying sharks have died to lightnings. I've only seen like two lightnings go down. Maybe three? Nope. Two lightnings go down to probably ten flying sharks have gone down. Now that's a direct fire. That's an error from the Lightnings. They've let him get within three miles. That's his own fault. And he will die. And he's only got himself to blame. Stealth must not let anyone get within kind of 50 miles of them. They've done it again here. Again, that's AI, I'm afraid. That said, I go back to my original point. In the you know heat of war, 
these happen, and it will even happen to humans. You get distracted. So what would have happily happened... Good night. What would have happened is this guy here was concentrating on these guys over here, and this other guy snuck up. But it's just bad training at the end of the day. He lost his SA. Whereas the blue, the reds are actually doing pretty good on their SA. They're, they're using their eyeballs more than the lightning drivers are doing, even the AI lightning drivers. When they're getting close, they're being much more effective than the Americans. That's maybe even modeled to a degree in game. I don't know how much, but... Something to think about. That's a direct fire PL-15 that's tracking. Again, he allowed himself to get too close. He's only on himself to blame for that. Use your eyeballs. Dead. Lightning. Lightnings are getting too close. Now here's a really important thing about these viewers. They've only got four missiles. They fire four missiles and then they're dead. Uh, then they're out. They either then RTB, as they would in real life, or they stay and fight and do nothing. Unfortunately, AI is stupid. And some of them, like this guy, will just be spinning around in circles now, doing nothing. And waiting to get shot. There's not much... Well, there's nothing we can do about that that I'm aware of. So you will see lightnings going down for stupid reasons like this. Uh, it's unrealistic, but it doesn't really matter in the scheme of things, you know. You know, It doesn't really matter if airframes go down, they're not going to be used again. In the scope of our simulation. So when you see those lightnings doing real stupid things, like this guy, it's because he's got no missiles left. And he doesn't know what to do. What do I do? What do I do? Now that's a your choice, valid viewers. I asked you, uh, well I read from the latest comments, who wanted stealth mode and who wanted murder mode. And most of you wanted stealth mode this time. Uh oh, Grump's about to... That's unfair. That's cheating on Grump there. No, it's not. What happened there is they shot a long-range missile at Grump and they shouldn't have been able to shoot that shot. Occasionally, stealth does break down in DCS and that's an example of it. Unless there's something that I didn't see. This guy is causing all sorts of problems from the American a heat seeker. No amount of stealth is dodging a freaking heat seeker. Wow, luckiest friggin... Again, that's an example of one of these guys that's out of ammo and is just flying around in circles at 100 knots. You know, his little AI brain doesn't know what else to do at that point. Uh, so the, the airframe becomes superfluous, essentially, once it's out of ammunition. Now, interestingly, the halfway line is pretty much at the halfway line now, so the uh, Chinese are pushing back, and they're coming out. Their loadouts are still pushing. However, I would say it's still very much the Americans winning. I get, you know, this is a war of attrition at the end of the day, as it probably would be in real life. I think the Americans are burning, uh, sorry, I think the Chinese are burning through more airframes than the Americans, and the only Americans that are dying are guys that are Winchester, don't have any more missiles left. Uh, the guys that don't have any more missiles left, even in real life, wouldn't be able to fully go and land and rearm. They can't do that because they would start interrupting the guys that are taking off. They're, they're sending the whole air wing out. So they would, all they would do is go back here, sit at the tankers, and wait until the battle's over. Then go and land. Because that only then will the deck be free for landing. So there's something to think about there, value viewers. You can't just go home and rearm and come back. I will allow my humans to do it, but not the AI just can't do it. Okay, again, a stupid lightning with no missiles left. It's just, you know, got in trouble. Again, it's no major loss. He's no use now. He hasn't got any missiles. Well, this is a weird problem to have. This J-15 has been killing lightnings. You can tell because look how many sidewinders. Every sidewinder is shot. It's probably killed a lightning. Friggin' super Chinese, man. Uh, the F-35C... Guys, is the F-35C have the internal gun? Negative. Just no. the A model. Well, there you go. There's, they haven't even got any cannon. I don't think they have. Maybe I put one on, I can't remember. No, they haven't got an internal cannon. So it's just going to follow him around like an idiot. And another PL dead. And another... Winchester Lightning dead. Oh, it's so frustrating, isn't it? Oh, finally they got him. He's dead. Oh, he's got his hook out. You're not going home, mate. Ah, it's annoying, but it is what it is. Oh, look at the big... And this is where America really starts to win. Look at that. Chang, chang, chang. Big, long-range A120D smacking them down over the head. Push is firing a PL-15, but again, it's almost certainly a dumb fired. You can't see the stealths from there. Do we have any signs of any Hornets? Oh, SM2s! All through that, valid viewers. I apologise. I wasn't um, busy yapping away. But this has been happening. This is the American destroyers defending the carrier, obviously. Uh, they've shot all of the YJ-2s down. There was never any real chance those YJ-2062s were going to make it through a uh, American destroyer screen. They've got each of these. has got 64 SM-2 missiles. Um, it will weaken their reserve of missiles, which is modelled, but it won't get through them. So um, they're kind of just a waste of missiles, really. But these PL-15s are almost certainly done-fired, and they're not going to be a threat. Now, what I was going to say is, where are the super bugs? today. Okay, the last of the 28 uh, 
These guys, I think, have RTB'd. They've RTB'd, look. Some of them will RTB. It's up to the AI whether they do it or not. The Super Hornets are now taking off. Uh, those are air-to-air -air with A120Ds. As you can see there, they are going to be more vulnerable to the flying sharks. Okay. Big fight. What is this guy? He's dead. He's dead. Don't worry about him. He's not alive. Uh, he may fly home, but according to the game, he's dead. Wow, his own missiles tracked him. That is unfortunate, China. A dead PO, a dead flying shark shot down by a flying shark. Huh. Uh, right. Shark eat their own. Yes, they do. Don't they do that? Okay, this guy is out of ammo, obviously. He's just suiciding himself in. To be honest, I'm quite happy they're doing that because they cleared the map up and I have limited resources to render them. So if he wants to fly and be a suicide bot, do it. Now, lots more missiles going out, you know, within 12 miles. They will be able to see that stealth probably even in real life. 13 miles. Especially on the arse end of it with no stealth. Boom. He was out. Anyway, it didn't matter. Um, are these guys... Ah, now here's a major thing. Anti-ships are out, which means the fighters are all gone. You're on... Okay, now here's a really important point, valued viewers. All the Chinese have left, because they've been dying so much quicker, is that guy, that guy, that guy, and that guy, and, you know, humans. Basically, two AI fighters left. Where well, the Americans have probably 20 AI fighters left. And that's because the Chinese have been dying probably at a ratio of 4 to 1 to the Americans. The only Americans that have been dying are the guys who are Winchester and have just gone in and suicided. So you can see the real difference now. Now the anti-shippers are out. Now once these anti-shippers are out, they're not really going to have much protection apart from the humans, which only make up a small amount of today's battle. So that is a major problem for China, I'm afraid. And it's pretty much what... This guy's got all the A120s he's flying at him. He's not going to notch them all. I stand corrected. Hit oh, no. There you go. All... Chinese AI air-to-air -air escort fighters are now dead, and they're just sending out the, uh, the anti-ship now. Now, the anti-ship are not protected. They've got some self-defense missiles, but they'll only fire at something like 10 miles away if you're lucky. So they're basically unprotected. Oh, look at this. Poor old bird. Poor old bird. No! Oh, he got his missile away, though. I feel really sorry for the human. The human F-35s are not impervious, but they're very well protected, and they can see everything on the battlefield. Poor old boys in the Chinese jets today, Strider, Poosh and Bird, can't, haven't actually seen anything they've shot at today apart from the AWACS and the, and the Vikings. So if you think they're having fun, they're not. But they will sacrifice and do it for us because that's what they, they do. Uh, so mass, and that really shows actually the difference of what we've been seeing here. The Reds can't see the Blues, the Blues can see the Reds. The Blues, I think, have fought pretty crappily, the AI. But again, that's a them problem. There's only so much control I have over them. That was dumb fired. It's just flying off nowhere to no man's land. Simba's coming in. I haven't seen Simba in a while. Simba, how do you feel about shooting invisible targets? Uh, you know, they say you can't hit what you can't see, but I aimed at it otherwise. Right. He's aimed at something. I don't know what he's aimed at. Oh, the Super Hornets are up. They can see. Right, it's a fair fight now, finally. Super Hornets can be seen almost as well as J-15s, and that's what Simba's launching at at break. 81 Nordic miles, 95 statute miles. So these are vulnerable. Vulnerable legacy weapons platforms. And one thing that uh, I know the Stealths have done some stupid things today because limits to AI and stuff, but this really does show the benefit of a fifth gen fighter over a fourth gen fighter in pretty realistic scenarios. And these fourth gen fighters are bloody good, by the way. I know kinematically they're not that fast, their engines aren't the best, but their radar and their missiles, according on paper, are as good as anything. So, you know, they're not clubbing seals here. What? Jesus, look at Simba. He is not happy. Why has he done that? Because he knows they're there, but he can't see them. How does he know they're there? I have actually no idea. He's probably watching my stream. But he can't fire no. at them. He can't lock them. Um, so he's just had to dumb fire them out. Uh, is it possible dumb firing them can work? Yeah, it's probably the best way, actually, of attacking a stealth plane. is to fire where you think they are. And these missiles, if they get within enough range and enough cone of the missile when it goes active... Whoops. Uh, it will actually track and kill us still. That is a real thing. And it might even see it here today. No, they haven't caught. So if that stealth is in the right place at the right time on that missile, in the cone, within the range, draw a little kind of cone out the front of it, uh, it will track him. I was trying to track it. Oh, it just missed it. But it's almost impossible. It's, you know, you know, actually doing it is almost impossible. You had one PL-15 track the Northern Lightning, but it mm. just uh, turned... I've basically got one more fighter, which is Simba, who's got no ammo. <laughs> Bless their cotton socks, trying to try so hard. And then it's just anti-shippers. Anti-shippers will get within range of their YJ-83s, which are about 100 miles, by the way. Actually, I'm not sure how far it is. 
It's actually at about 100 miles now. Oh, wow, just as I was saying it. Could not script that better. Why J83 anti ship missiles out? Uh, Raptors, you're not killing enough anti shippers. Note. Uh, Chinese anti-ship missiles are better than American anti-ship missiles. This here is better than a harpoon. It's got longer range and it travels faster. Again, according to Wikidata, which is, of course, what we have to go by. So, these guys are now reacting and starting to pump. The Super Hornets have heard me. And their AI brains are now pumping missiles out at 60, 70 miles. Which is what they need to do. Interesting, some of the F-35, like, not all of them have gone stupid when they've gone Winchester. Some have RTP'd, as they would do in real life. Uh, it's actually best in game if they don't, because they will actually go and land. And when they land, they will stop these guys taking off. So it's actually best if they do cull themselves. I, I do not hope the game makers fix that. They should keep it as it is. Uh, or just fly off in a random direction and don't land. Right, these guys, are. if you're wondering why they've been stupid, it's because they're Winchester. And they've got literally no way of killing these guys other than ramming them with their faces. One of 120Ds going in. Yep. Uh, here comes a culling of the anti-ship. A uh, load of aim on TDDs from that was from the Super Hornets. And it's missed. Run out of battery. Batteries, we've allowed her about three minutes in the, on the various sense. Or was it going for this guy? No. They will track. They'll track something. AI stu shoot a stupid stuff. If there's a whole bunch of guys here, they'll shoot it like the guy at the back because AI. Chinese fleet is firing. Now, I don't know why they fired these missiles. I don't know what they're trying to achieve. They fired these HQ-9s. They're an equivalent of the 90s uh, Russian Grumbles. They're, they're actually pretty good. Again, on paper. Okay, it's happened. Yeah, and what's happened now, guys, is the Super Hornets have got in. They've, the Flying Sharks are dead, so the Super Hornets have got in. And the Super Hornets are bomb trucks. They're killers. They've got 10 missiles on each. And they've just what they've done is just whipped, launched everything. So the technique of sending the selves in first to take down the fighters and then sending the bomb trucks, the Super Hornets in to clear up the bombers is the perfect technique and that's what's gone on today. And to be honest, I pretty much did it by fluke. And you really gotta feel sorry for the Chinese now, valued humans. Because these fighters fighting as hard as they can, the humans, there's nothing they can do. They can actually see the Super Hornets. They can have a pop at the Super Hornets, but it really is a one-way fight from here on in. And the American anti-ship haven't even taken off yet, let alone gonna be opposed by anything. Every fighter right next to me just went down. That's really... How did Simba survive so long? How did... I just found yeah. Simba right next to their freaking carrier. Uh, because he, um... He had, like, one engine left and was badly oh, damaged. Yeah, so sometimes the, the AO will just pity you and never... Look, it's interesting that some of these guys, RTB, probably do this. The only thing is by doing that, they've stopped these guys launching. Which slowed the overall launch rate. One of the reasons we saw an overall slow of the launch rate of the Americans was that their fighters were surviving, going back, stopping the catapults, and shutting the carrier down for 10 minutes. So that's... Would they do that in real life? I don't know. I think they would just have to let the fighters die. Because... And run out of fuel. Because they've got to get these fighters airborne up. The survival of the carrier group. Oh, these are anti-ship. Anti-ship is up finally, value viewers. Really interesting dynamics we've seen today. The different approaches. Strider's in. And he's actually finally seen a stealth. That, that was direct fire from Strider. Nine miles. Just said 35 well, minutes. The Raywex is about to die, I think. Oh, 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 oh shot! Oh, Chinese AWAX is not so high tech anymore. Wow, that was cool. Uh, not that it really uh, matters. Well, there, went, where the, there, there went my primary target. Um, okay. Secondary target. Simba, where are you at? It's going to make exactly zero difference at this point, guys. I'm on a boat. I think. Copy, I'm gonna shoot the boat. The Americans have wiped out the Chinese bombers in a matter of maybe three minutes. Thirty bombers just shot down. If you cut if you can't feel sorry for them, then you have no heart. And I'm not joking, that's 30, 30 bombers. They've all taken off. They're all dead. All of you to assume I have a heart cap. Um that's how powerful uh a F uh Super Hornet Squadron fit in murder fit can be. TWS, and that was without AWACS, by the way. There was no AWACS to help them, which is all modern, by the way. I got one thing to say, Cap. Yes, uh... Who are you from? America. Killers found the, uh... Most recent one, uh, the latest one. The last one! No, he hasn't. His eye's not working. Yes, he has. Oh, poor last little anti-shipper. So they managed to get how many missiles out? Oh, even the missile. No, even the missiles were shot down. No, they're not. There they are. We've got three YG-84s shot through that his destroyer screens, Grump's destroyer screens can have to worry about. Now, did I give you a gun? Oh, it doesn't really matter, because he's dead. Yes, I did yeah, give you, you a did. 
probably an accident. I probably didn't mean to give you a gun. Well done, uh, boys. You've shot down the last aerial target, apart from respawning humans, which aren't going to be a massive threat because I can't really see you. Uh, it's now all just about anti-shippers, um, which I wish would hurry up. I'm an anti-shipper. Roger. I'm going to go Fox go for in. one of their destroyers. Go on in. Again, he's out of ammo, so he's going to go and do something useful. Well, by which I mean get shot down by Chinese ships. And he's doing it the right way. He's going low. Now, these ships will see him at about 20 miles. And in fact, you can see it there. As they probably would in real life. With a radar of that power, you can pretty much target an insect. Uh, which is what's going on here. Now, can he dodge the missiles is the question. He can. They've lost track. No, they were going for the super bogs. They were going for the super bogs. Oof. He's going to sneak underneath these grumbles. Super bog being targeted, yo. Bog is uh, reduced visibility, but by no means is it a stealth aircraft. God, Jesus, how is Killer still alive? He's getting through. Although he's chosen literally the worst path. He's gone straight through to 052C destroyers. That's an interesting way of doing it. Well, you could just say it's a good uh, destroyer screen set up by Simba. Look at that, right through the middle. I mean, that's what I would say. He was so low. They can see him, but he was so low, so fast. Mixed with his stealth, they couldn't target him. Is that realistic? Maybe. Maybe. Oh, I finally got a Hornet kill. Yay. I'm done. Yeah. I know exactly what I'm going for. Simba Wimba. Oh, Simba. Maximum kinetic energy. Oof. That tower is looking pretty nice this time of year. Our poor old Chinese just getting shot down time after time now. Getting bundled by the Super Hornets. Will he do damage? Yes, he will. His kinetic ability will do damage much less than it would in real life. If you crash this in there, that would pretty much take out a, a Nimitz class. Or any class. There's so much energy in that aeroplane right now. In-game, we'll just do a titchy witchy bit of damage. Bad time to run out of fuel, really. Oh, his kinetic energy is slowly reducing and slowly reducing. Will he even get there now? Simba's out of pop at you. Oh, how about that? He went through the crane and bounced off the wall. Are you invincible or something? You're not, are you? No, because I've seen you die. Right, onto the deck I've then, definitely sir. definitely died. That was some weird coding going on there, valued viewers. Never mind. You still, even at this speed, you would still take out a deck and cause massive problems and huge fire. Right, just go for the center of the deck so you don't get any weird problems. Yep. Have you there? That would be now Oosh. covered in kerosene. It would be burning. It would catch him fire to stuff. Did he do any actual damage? We got one pixel of damage. The boys, Let's go. The boys are at the point where they can't even spawn now. They're 50 miles back from the carrier. But these super hornets, at 70, 80 miles away, are just pummeling them. If it's any consolation, the first anti-shipper hornets have uh, decided to join in on the fight. About goddamn time. How long does it take to get some freaking anti-ship missiles out? Oh, finally! As I said it, the first anti-ship missiles are going out. Here's another slightly annoying thing, valued viewers. Uh, I've asked all of these Hornets to specifically target that ship there, the carrier. However, they won't listen to me. I can only control them so much. And it looks like they've actually shot a Simba's destroyer screen. I've got confused about where the carrier is. I think that's how that's modelled. And they've actually shot a destroyer screen. So I don't think they're actually going to shoot even at any... at the thing. Uh, we, there's nothing we can do about that. The only way we can get around to that is have human anti-shippers that can find out, figure out which ship is which. But in real life, that's pretty realistic. These guys wouldn't have a clue where that carrier is. They've got a air-to-sea air radar, but... They can't tell which one's the super carrier from that. Problems with anti-ship. Wow, how's Grandpa hit? There's none. Oh, he almost got hit. Matrix has gone right over at 35,000 feet. He's gone over the destroyers. And they've not managed to target him. RCS, baby. Yeah. They fired at you, but the missiles aren't tracking properly. I'm going to let a few more anti-shippers shoot, and then we'll terminate after that, guys, because it looks like they're not going to shoot the carrier anyway. Nothing's going to happen. And we'll obviously call that an American victory at that point. So sorry, bird. I would call it a stalemate because they haven't landed an anti-ship. You've lost your you've lost your air wing, Simba. These guys would all now they've lost a quarter of their air wing. You've lost all your air wing. These guys were just RTB. Rearm. I'm on a boat. 
Right. And that, my boat is still good. Right, well, you won the argument then, Zimba. <laughs> that said, uh, Matrix is coming for you. Well, I got something that for said, him. That said, it's time to wild weasel, boys. Let's do it. Because of these long-range fights we're doing, valued viewers, you will, know, you will no longer see any sexy ends, no, no gunfights between boats and stuff, obviously. It's just not possible with these huge ranges. But this is much more Matrix, realistic. Matrix, did you just run around and run away? No, he's not. He's not actually not running Negative. away. Uh, yes, yes, I did. Of course uh, I did. Oh. Look at me! Yes, uh, Grump, can we help you with a thing? I'm just telling Simba ships to look at me. I'm seeing lots of, yeah, this next batch of AGMs have gone out and they've not gone out within range to fire. I hate to the carrier, so they've all gone for the destroyer screen. Welcome to DCS AI. Um, I say that, but it is, again, it is actually pretty realistic. So it's probably done on purpose. Uh, so we will uh, double check those missiles. Have your last life now, basically. Jeez, getting all these missiles already. Simba dumb firing his missiles. Not nah, dumb fired. Oh, he tracked someone. He tracked Matrix. One thing I always wonder about is when Matrix's bomb bay opens, I wonder if it increases the RCS. It's technically programmable. They might have done it. I don't know. Uh, Matrix, you might as well, since we're in the death we're only in the last few seconds, once you've got rid of your missiles, you might as well put your face into that CV, to be honest. Roger. And with some gunfire or whatever, someone might, you know, try and do one more than one pixel of damage. Oh! Poosh, no. Oof. Yeah. Simba, I got one question for you. He's not in the mood. By the sounds of it, he's not in the mood. I was going to ask if he was on a boat. I believe he's on a boat, Grump. Okay. Can you, can you confirm whether he's on a boat or not? Uh, let me confirm with my face. Oh. Look at this, valued viewers. There are still AI F-35Cs alive from an hour ago. Just not knowing what to do. Just going back here. I've not seen any refuel, actually. No, they've still got ammo. I don't know. I'm not targeting you for some reason. For reasons. Probably for reasons, I would imagine. Uh-oh. Strider's just got himself into ACM with a fat Amy. Really? Uh, I didn't say anything. Loads of American harpoons going in. Probably 30, 30 harpoons in already. And loads more coming. Should be able to get an IR lock still. No gun sight, the Charlie in the Bravo, of course. Ah. That's a problem. Like you're firing by tracer. Oh crap, I've got guns. Alright, make sure you go into the hull. Uh, for some reason, the tower isn't modeled. Ah. Uh, Destroyers are attacking the, um, yeah. the AGMs. They'll shoot most of them down. These scrambles missiles are actually pretty tip top. Again, in game and in Wikipedia. In real yeah, life, I've never been shot by one. Aye! Well, in real life, I reckon a flanker would beat a fat Amy, to be honest, in a fair on fair dogfight like this. With, um, oh, just with anything. Simba. Boom. Oh, you took oh. all the much damage you did. Well done, Grump. Oh, that is, Simba. That, is a, that is a deck out of commission. That's a deck out of commission, Simba. Oh, sorry. Wowee, you did a lot of damage. How did you do that? Is it because you're a heavy Amy? Uh, con uh, OPSEC. Um, right, that's the end of it, guys. Um, we don't need to see any more. We know exactly what's going to happen. I'm going to talk through it. Okay, now we have a sip of tea. And then, uh, let's summarize what we saw here today. Initial fight. <laughs> The Americans won by a kill ratio of about four to one from what I saw there. A lot of lightnings threw their lives away because they'd reached the end of their programming life. They had no missiles left, and so they just basically commit suicide, um, which is actually quite a useful thing to do. It clears the airspace, it clears the deck space, but they just wiped the Chinese out. Then the Chinese anti-shippers come, came the next 30 of them, by which time there were still loads of fresh American fighters, F-35Cs, a couple of humans, but especially the bomb trucks, the air, the Super Hornets, which were carrying 10 Amrams each or whatever. While they still had their AWACS or whatever, they just launched all their missiles and wiped out 30 anti-shippers before all but one got to fire their missiles at 100 miles. Then... Uh, the American anti-shippers took off and started launching their missiles. Although programmed to go for the CV, they actually shot at these guys here, and I could—I know that because I know they've got a 70 mile range and I could put a 70 mile thing out there and that's what they shot at. Would they do that in real life? Maybe. I mean, they can only see, without an AWACS, they can only see what their air to ground rate radar sees, which is basically some blips. So they fire at some blips, as they would do in real life. Would those harpoons have taken these ships down? Maybe it would have damaged about half of them, I would expect. 30 planes sequencing harpoons, about half would get killed, about half would get through, about half of those destroyers would have been destroyed. At the end, we need to have a winner. It was a clear winner for the Americans because 100% of the Chinese air arm is wiped out. 
only 30% of the American IR armors wiped out. Remember, the Chinese started with 61, the Americans started with 75, 73. So they weren't down to similar, but it was the quality of aircraft, uh, as we would have seen in real life, that meant a massive defeat. Would the Americans ever get off Scot 3 without losing any planes? No. Even if internet people tell you they would, they wouldn't. They would get shot down. Pilots would make mistakes, confusion, jammers, even F 35s would get in trouble. So there would be losses. And to be honest, it wouldn't be that much different from what we've seen here. About a quarter of the fleet might get shot down. Maybe a little bit less in real life. For my human pilots, it was almost impossible for the Reds. They, the only things they saw on their radars were a bunch of uh, planes back at the aircraft carrier, the AWACS and the Vikings, which they did actually shoot down. Ah, oh, someone's tanking. Someone's frigging tanking. It works. Oh, man. It works. Look at that. I mean, they shot all their missiles. They they don't have anything. They're just tanking to go home. So all we need, to, that's the first time we've ever got this working, by the way, valid viewers. Uh, what we need now is the way of forcing them to do this. So instead of going in and be dummies and just dying like they do at the moment, we need now a way of forcing them to go back and use the tankers. If anyone knows how to do that, uh, to script that, please let me know. Because I would love to see these guys going in, shooting the missiles, coming back, tanking, and then waiting to land. I would love to know how to do that. That would be brilliant. Uh, I forgot where I was, but to be honest, for me, massive victory for the Americans. I actually thought it was going to be like that because I had a titchy witchy bit of testing. And I thought it was all brilliant. I thought the missiles all worked exactly as they would do in real life. The jammers worked as they would do in real life. The stealth worked a titchy bit worse than in real life, but otherwise pretty much as in real life. Uh, like I said, it was a nightmare for these humans because they couldn't see anything. They were just dumb firing the missiles and hoping for the best. And... 95% of their missiles missed, whereas probably 50% of the American missiles missed. Uh, and I don't think we can make that any better now, uh, other than using the AGM-158C, the RASM, which I think will just be a massive game changer and a massive cheat, because it can't really be shot down, and it'll get really boring at that point. Guys, your uh, debrief. Do we want to talk about uh, Fleet Admiral's uh, tactics at mm. this point, now that the mission's over? Grump, what were your tactics? Uh, if you notice, at this point, I've got uh, my Arleigh Burks really staggered out with one really out in the front. Yep. And he was going to be the point defense guy. As the anti-ship missiles came in, he would be launching his first SM-2s. And if he wasn't doing the job, he would have the cover, or the back cover of the couple of other Arleigh Burks. Uh, and if they couldn't get the job done, then I got the Tycos uh, a little bit closer to my carrier. I moved my carrier up uh, just a little bit, and just to get some airplanes into the air, get some, get him some headwind, you know, uh, and then stopped him. Didn't want to get him too close, uh, but yeah, that was basically what I did. Just a full gauntlet, staggered uh, 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 ships, and you know, as the threats would, if it was more overwhelming threats, uh, of course, it would have to run through the gauntlet, get hit uh, either side, uh, left and right of the, of a straight in on the carrier, so. You'd, not only would you get SM2 fire, but you'd be getting those uh, Sea Whiz. Also, Grump, uh, kind of like you said as well, you've got to sacrifice something. If the F-35s hadn't performed, if they had all had engine failure or whatever, and the those 30 sharks got their missiles out, something's got to, something's going to get blown up. So you put your least valuable asset out in front, which is an Arleigh Burke, that's going to get blown up. Remember, these missiles in-game in real life are stupid. They go for their own targets, and it's usually just the first one they see. Simba, do you want to tell us your tactic? Yours is a bit different, obviously. Knowing that we were going up against stealth, and the a goal of trying to create a SAM network to fight out of, I, I pressed forward with two destroyers and, a, and the frigate. And like I said, that they were just steaming full steam ahead, trying to trying to create some kind of a frontline push to give my guys something to, to fall back into. The two destroyers that you see that have fanned out uh, to the top and bottom of the map, I actually did a hold fire on those. Because huh. my goal was if this was going to keep prolonging, if I could get them out semi-flankish, then I would activate them so that I could send anti-shipping missiles in from the sides. And that's mm -hmm. hoping that as we've seen in battles, like these navy boats are just they're just you know spamming their their uh, their defense missiles. So my goal was hopefully if we could run the Americans out of their self protection missiles, I would be able to activate those and some anti ship missiles would get through in the end. And your tactic worked as well, really, in that it saved the carrier at least. I mean, you lost a fight because the air wings down, but the AGMs were all going for your destroyer, front destroyer, because they're stupid at the end of the day. They only know so much, and they just shot at the first blip they saw. Uh, any other uh, debrief points from my valued pilots? Yeah, you. if you've got stealth, 
that you should keep it stealth unless uh, your enemy's defenseless, and then you can stack up the weapons. Mm -hmm. Right. Indeed, indeed. Yeah, that was fun just being shot at the air a million times. I know, and right? Seeing an art target. It's about time to be a Chinese man. That's probably the last time we'll do this valued viewers this fight because there's nothing left to change uh, unless the Chinese bring out their J35, and then get that, in which case we'll try and model it, or we can get the American AGM 158 working, then we can try remodeling it, and that will change the dynamics. Otherwise, that's pretty much as far as the sim will allow us to go with it uh, it's a massive change like i said and i hope you really enjoyed that because that's a that's a really cool fight and we'll see you later